Yo, what is up, everyone? Good to have you guys in the stream. Hope you guys are doing amazing, and we're going to give God all the glory. Good to have you guys in the house. Pastor Wizzy coming at you live. Merry early Christmas to every single one of you in the chat. Guys, we are going into week number two of our series called Slaying Holiday Spirits. If you didn't catch last week, I would encourage you to go back and watch the VOD. It's also on my YouTube channel. Well, last week, we talked about slaying the spirit of wanting more that we live in a society and i'm guilty of it you're guilty of it at times where no matter how much we have we always always want more and how that can lead to you and i living a life of dissatisfaction because we always feel in order to be happy we need the next thing we're always as gamers looking for more content more content we talked about how having content doesn't lead to being content that our joy is found in God when you and I decide, you know what, instead of asking God to give me more, I'm going to be grateful for what I already have. And we're going to learn to slay the spirit of wanting more. But today, friends, we want to continue in that series, but taking things in a different direction. Some of you guys know that in my stream, I just got back into World of Warcraft and playing ever since vanilla. And I am just the happiest streamer in the world because I love WoW. I love it. I love PvE. I love PvP. But I love the game because, in my opinion, it's super strategic. I remember back in the day, I was making a push to Daramaktir, one of the best PvP guilds in the world. Thank God we actually did make it. I actually did a YouTube series on it. We did make it in. It was pretty amazing. I got to connect with another YouTuber and get in that guild for a short while, and then I quit the game. <laughs> what else is new? But I loved doing Arena because in Arena, you couldn't just use your abilities whenever you want. You had to be tactful, you had to be strategic, and if you were going to beat the two-on-two two or going to beat the three-on-three, three, you had to be strategic And when you were going to use your special abilities. In World of Warcraft, it's known as cooldowns. You click a button and for temporarily, you become like 50% stronger. In other games, there are special abilities as well. Games like Overwatch, right? You're always kind of charging up. You're looking for that ultimate so you can go and wreck the whole team, right? In Destiny, there's literally things called special ammo, and there's different variances of this in multiple games but essentially most games have that ability that once you get it makes you a little bit stronger and most people feel you know what if we're going to set up a play if we're going to set up a real big push in overwatch if we're going to really cap that point if we're going to push towards the point we've got to wait until i've got my ultimate i've got to wait until my ultimate charges guys we can't go in just yet my ultimate still needs 20 more percent Sometimes in Arena and World of Warcraft, you're like, all right, I think we can CC that healer and get him down, but I've still got 20 seconds left on my cooldown. And Destiny, if you get to hear any great players, any streamers talking when they're communicating, hey, we can really go for a cap here, but there's still 15 seconds left on the special ammo. And sometimes, literally people in video games, they will strategize their entire plays. They will make all of their decisions based off the ability of these special abilities. That they won't try to make a move, they won't do anything, they won't try to push forward, they won't feel like they can accomplish their goal unless they have that special ability. They don't have their ultimates, don't have in Destiny that special ammo. And sometimes you and I, we've all been there, where in life we feel like God can't accomplish his goals unless we've got some special abilities. Sometimes you and I feel that, you know what, I'm not the most talented. I'm not the most special, I'm not the smartest, I'm not the best looking, I'm not the most intriguing. And therefore, because I'm not that special, God can't use me to make a big difference in this world. God can't use me to change things. And today, as we go into part two of our slaying holiday spirits, I want to talk to you about slaying this mindset. We want to take on a new mindset that God can use you in any way, shape, or form. Today, I want to talk to you about slaying the spirit of selecting the special. Because the mindset that I want to break in your mind today, that God is not a God that selects the special, but he uses the unlikely. That for some of you that maybe have been labeled by other people, that maybe you're not qualified, maybe you're not the most talented, and some of you feel like, you know what, it's pretty unlikely that God will use me because I'm not, I'm not the brightest chip in the block. I'm not the most talented. I'm not the greatest gamer. But can I tell you, some of you feel, you know what, it's unlikely that God's actually able to use me. And that's why I'm so glad that God's not in the business of selecting the special, but he uses the unlikely. 
I want to read a passage to you that we talked about a little bit in my stream just a few days ago, but I really, really want to dive in deep today and talk in more detail. I think something that's really, really going to encourage you. Hey, if you're here for the first time, I would encourage you, get yourself a Bible. I'm telling you, this thing is not outdated. It does not need to be updated. It is alive, and we want to do our best to relate this to gamers so you can understand how much God loves you. We're going to have some, if you don't have a Bible, I encourage you, get yourself one. Get a down, Download the app on your phone called the Bible. It's absolutely free. But if not, fear not, it's going to be on the screen just in front of you. I want to read a few verses to you. For some of you, this is a very, very famous story that you've heard maybe many times. Maybe for some of you, it's brand new. Either one is okay. But I want to try to bring it to you either for the first time or from a new perspective. It's John 6, verses 5 to 10. It's going to be on the screen. Read along with me. It says, Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him. And he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for all these people to eat. Now catch this. He had, Jesus had only asked him to test him for he already had in mind what he was going to do. This isn't even what we're talking about, but I can encourage you today that some of you have no idea how you're going to bring a resolution to the situation that you're facing. Some of you are so mind stricken, so stressed out because you have no idea how you're going to get through the next situation, how you're going to pay the next bill, how you're going to figure out the next problem. But the reality is you can rest easy because there's a God who already, already has in mind what he's going to do for you. Sometimes we just got to be patient and trust God. Continue on in the next verse, verse number seven. It says, Philip answered Jesus. They're talking about how are we going to feed all these people? Philip answered, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for all these people to even have one bite. Now, notice he doesn't even say that it would take half a year's salary to feed all these people a full meal. It says that it would, it would take half a salary to give each person even just one bite. You can begin to understand the magnitude of the crowd that's in front of them. Okay, This is a large problem. And their first solution, their first idea is Philip. Philip says, Jesus, we don't have something special enough to solve this big problem. In order to fix this problem, God, we're going to need something special. We're going to need something big. We're going to need someone talented. We're going to need someone intelligent. In verse number eight, another one of the disciples, that word simply means one of the followers of Jesus. When it uses this word here, it's talking about just the 12 disciples. Another one of the disciples, Andrew, who was Simon, Peter's brother. So he decides to speak up and he says, Jesus, here's a boy with five small barley loaves, five pieces of bread and two fish. But how far is this going to go among so many people? Jesus, I've got this little boy. He's nagging me. I wasn't even going to bother you, God, because I know you're big and you're holy. And I wasn't even going to bother you. But we got this little boy. He keeps nagging me. keeps saying he sees this huge problem. But he keeps nagging me about this stinking five pieces of bread and two fish. And I keep, I keep telling this kid, like, this is not good enough. Do you realize the ginormous problem in front of us? Do you realize, little boy, this ginormous issue that's in front of us? Your solution, what you have to offer, it's really not that special, okay? It's really not that great, okay? Why don't you go back and we're going to sit here like big men and we're going to wait until our ultimate chart is up so we can do something real big. Because what you just brought to the table, you think that's going to bring the solution, but it's kind of unlikely. It's kind of unlikely that what you just offered, that your five pieces of bread and two fish it's pretty unlikely that this is going to solve our problems, that this is going to be able to be used by God to change the world. And I love Jesus' response. I love it. It's just amazing. See, Andrew, small-minded human being, sometimes like you and I, he looks at the situation and he sees the big problem and he sees this potential solution this little boy brings. And he says, you think that's going to fix everything, but it's pretty unlikely. And some of you have maybe had an Andrew in your life to where you've been brave at moments. You saw some kind of solution. Maybe you've been brave enough to step up to the plate, maybe in your work, maybe in a group, maybe to your boss and said, hey, I see this, I see this solution. You know what? I, I, I think I've got what it takes. I, I think I've got a good idea. I think I've got something special to bring to the table. But you've been discouraged because just like Andrew, they're your friends or your boss, your workplace, or maybe the people you do in a group project with, their response was, yeah, good idea, but yeah, it's unlikely. 
it's unlikely going to be able to be special enough in order for us to accomplish the goal that's ahead of us. And look what Jesus says. Andrew, pretty much, he doesn't think this is going to work. He looks at it. It's something, but it's unlikely. He says, how far will this go among so many? And look at Jesus right off the bat. Jesus says, I want you to have the people sit down. Peter's, Andrew's like, but God, don't you, don't you realize what we just, what, don't you realize what I just brought to you? Like, we've got thousands of people here and we've got five bread and two fish. And you're saying, sit the people down. We're going to start getting to work. He says, have the people sit down. I want you to catch this right here. There was plenty of grass in that place and they sat down. This is crucial, especially what's in the parentheses. There were about 5,000 men that were there. For some of you who don't know the story, I don't have time to go into it grave detail and encourage you. John chapter 6, 5 to 10, the entire chapter, read this story. It is beautiful on how Jesus literally took five loaves and two fish and literally multiplied it enough to feed 15,000 people, approximately. Some of you are like 15,000 people. Pastor Susie, the screen, I, mean, I see it like it's right in front of you. Unless there's a typo here, it says 5,000 men. But see what you got to understand. This is why I encourage every single one of you all the time. Don't just read the Bible, but study the Bible because there's so many hidden golden nuggets. Did you know that back in these days, the culture said that when it came to tallying up a group of people, when it came to counting people, that the only people that actually got counted were the men that were 20 and above. Only people that literally got counted in the tally were men that were 20 and above. So commentators say that in this gathering, they were really more like 15,000 people because you say the average that every man had one wife and every wife and every family had one child. So there'd probably be approximately about 15,000 people here. So one, that goes to show the majesty and the greatness of how God was able to do something miraculous, feed 15,000, maybe even more people with five pieces of bread and two fish. He was, tape, he was able to take something that was unlikely and use it to do something special. But really what I want you to catch in this is that this little boy who Andrew and even society said, man, you don't even matter enough that we're not even going to put you on our tally. We're, we're not even going to put you in the count. I mean, literally this is the way that it worked. If you invited some friends over and you invited three families and each family had five kids under the age of 20 and each husband had a wife and there was three husbands, and someone asked you, hey, who came over last night? You would, you'd say three men. Like, that's it. That's just how they counted people back then. So you've got this boy that society saying, man, you're not even good enough for us to put in our tally. Man, you don't even count. And some of you feel like, man, I don't have anything special to offer. Therefore, I have no value. Therefore, I have no worth. Therefore, I just don't count. But that might be what the world says about you. But can I tell you what Jesus said about this man? Not only did, said about this boy, not only did Jesus take what he had and do a miracle with it, but you got to understand what culture didn't deem worthy. When it came to this little boy said, you don't count, we're not even going to put you in our tally. What culture didn't deem worthy to put in man's count, the creator deemed worthy to put in God's word. The people said, you're not even good enough for me to put you on my piece of paper, man. I'm not even going to put you on my tally, not even going to put you on my sheet. But Jesus said, I'm going to put you in my Bible. And for thousands of years, people are going to teach the value and the value of bravery and boldness that you had the faith to believe that if you'll bring what is unlikely to me, I could do something special with it because God's not in the business of selecting the special. He's in the business of using the unlikely in unexpected ways to display his unexplainable power, to do things that you've never imagined through you and through me in this day and age to change the world for God's glory. But the reason that sometimes you and I feel that we can't be used, we feel like it's unlikely that we're going to be used by God is because we feel like we don't have any special abilities. Sometimes when people go to a restaurant, they sit down at the restaurant, they kind of just look at the menu, they look at the piece of paper, and they sit down and they're looking at their options in order to accomplish their goal, in order to fill their belly, to do what they've come to do. They're kind of looking at their options. They're kind of scoping it out. This looks pretty good. This looks pretty good. This looks, uh. but you know what? Ma'am, waitress, what's on the special? I want to know the best thing you've got on the menu. 
I see these options. These all look pretty good, but really, I'm, I've come for the best. I've come for the best of the best. What's on the special? And some of you think that's how God uses his idea of using people to change the world. That he's got a list of names and he says, hey, this guy's pretty good. But I mean, if I'm going to accomplish my goal, I'm, I'm going to need the best of the best. I'm going to need the special. Can I tell you, when the, the, re, the reality is that when God's looking at the menu, he's not looking at your ability. He's looking at his ability. Because I need you to grasp this today. That your opportunity, the chances of God using you to do something great have absolutely nothing to do with your ability. I want you, some of you, I want you to write this down. That your opportunity to be used is not dependent on your availability. It's not dependent on your ability. That your opportunity is not dependent on your ability to be good. Some of you feel like, well, God will use me if I can just practice enough. God will use me if I can get my skills together. God will use me if I can get a PhD. If I was a little bit better, if I could just be good, then I would have an opportunity to be used by God. Can I tell you what the boy brought to Jesus? I mean, in hindsight of 15,000 people, really wasn't all that great, okay? His offering, his little, it wasn't really that special. It's five pieces of bread, two fish, okay? The reality is it wasn't that great, but he had a willing heart. And he said, God, you know what? This is all I have, but God, will you use me? And some of you need to catch this today, that your opportunity, the chances of God using you, your opportunity is not dependent on your ability to be good, but his ability to be God. That he doesn't use people because they've got skills. God doesn't use people because they've got talents. God uses people who are willing to say, God, I don't have much. I've only got five bread and two loaves, but God, if you'll use me, God's not looking at the menu for the best of the best. Because when God looks at the menu, he realizes the best thing on the menu is actually me. That's why we do communion every month. Only some of you will get that. When God's looking at the menu, he says, you know what? I've got a bunch of people who are unlikely who don't really have any special talents that actually really I could use. They don't have any special talents that can't do anything that I can't do already. Some of you watch my stream and you say, Pastor Susie, man, you've just, you've got a way with words. And I thank God that God has given me a gift that I've used and developed. But how dare we think that we're so special that our gifts can actually impress the creator of the universe. God loves me the way that I am. God loves you the way that you are. But do we really think that God's ability to use us is really about our talents and what we have to offer? Do we really think that our abilities are so good that they actually impress God? Do people really think that God is impressed by my ability to use words when he used words to create and speak the world into existence? Do we really think that we're actually that talented that we can impress the God of all the universe? So if our ability to be used by God is not actually based on our ability, then what's it based on? I'll say to you again, your opportunity is not dependent on your ability to be good. It's based on his ability to be God. That he is so strong, that he is so mighty, and that he is so good that he can take what the world might deem as unworthy. That he can take what the world might deem as unlikely, and he can do something amazing with it. If any of you have played any, any really kind of skill-based games, competitive multiplayer games, kind of games like Overwatch, Destiny, World of Warcraft, you've kind of been in that place where you've seen maybe what it looks like for people of equal skill level to play against each other. And when you're playing against an evenly matched team, you know, you're there and you're looking for your special abilities. Like I said earlier, you're creating strategies around your ultimates. In Destiny 2, you're creating strategies around getting your special abilities ammo but see that's what it's like when you got people of equal skill level but have you ever watched a pro play against a noob or even someone who's just like normal skill level because when you've got someone who's that good against just your average joe schmo see he's not worried about using his ultimate he's not worried about using special ammo you can have all these noobs 5v1 getting all their ultimates getting all their special ammo but i'm so good that I'm just going to use my auto attacks and I'm going to outplay, I'm going to outstrafe, I'm going to outthink, I'm going to outsmart, I'm going to destroy all of you and I don't even need to use my special. I don't even need to use my ultimate. If you're good enough, you can beat most people without relying on any kind of special abilities. And can I tell you that God is so good 
He is so big and hosts so strong that when it comes to his ability to use people to change the world, he doesn't need no special abilities. He doesn't need to be dependent on what we have to offer him because God is God. And I'll tell you, God will take the least talented. God will take the least intelligent and God will take the least experience so that he can be the most exalted. God will take the least experience, the guy that no one ever thought could make it happen. I want, I mean, let's think about David and Goliath, right? We've got King Saul and this huge problem, right? Just like, just like the disciples here, God, we've got, we've got a big problem. We got to feed 15,000 people. We need a solution. The boy brings five pieces of bread. They're like, it's pretty unlikely. We got King Saul. They see this big giant, big problem. David says, I think, I think I'm the man for the job. <laughs> Saul says, yeah, unlikely. You've got, you've got a sling and you've, you've got a rock, man. What are you going to, you don't even have any special abilities. You don't even have an ultimate. You have a rock, dude. How are you going to be able to accomplish this goal? But I'm so glad that God's not in the business of selecting the special, but it uses the unlikely and unexpected ways to display his unexplainable power. How dare we reach a place where we think that God's ability to use power, to use people is dependent on our abilities. I'll say it again. Your opportunity is not dependent on your ability to be good, but on his ability to be God. You may be here today and maybe you feel not the smartest person in your group. Maybe you feel like you're not the most talented in your class. Maybe people have told you, just like Andrew, you've brought an idea. Maybe you've tried something before and the world has just said, eh, it's unlikely, dude. Probably not going to work out. Can I tell you that when we started this ministry, said we had a heart to reach gamers. People said, you think that's going to work? Unlikely. Can we put some Jesus hype in the chat? I'm glad that they thought it was unlikely, but I'm glad that there's 123 people watching the stream where gamers are hearing that God loves them. We got to spam the Jesus hype. We got to shut down the naysayers, man. I am so glad that when Andrews of the world said, this is not going to work, that God said, I don't need something special. I don't need people to have abilities. I need people to have availability. Those who will come to me and say, God, I don't have much. I've only got five pieces of bread. My ultimate's not even ready. I don't have any special ammo. God's like, I don't need you to have special ammo. I can use you not because you're good, but because I'm God. And I can use people to do things they never, ever, ever thought possible in ways they never thought possible. I want to tell you today in your life that God will take the most unlikely situation and he'll do something unexplainable. He'll do something unexpected. He'll do things that you and I have never seen, never dreamed. The Bible says that God is doing a new thing, things that our ears have never heard, our eyes have never seen, our minds have never conceived. He's doing things that often the world might say is unlikely. Because you know how big God is? Over 2,000 years ago, he looked at the situation in the world. He looked at everything that was upon us. And he did something that was so unlikely. You see, because there's a prophecy. If you don't know what prophecy means, it's something that was spoken way before it actually comes to pass. There was a prophecy in Isaiah 7, 14 that says, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Other verses talk about how a baby is going to come and he's going to save the people from their sins. That a ruler is going to come and he's going to change the world. And at this time, people were waiting for a birth. People were waiting for someone to come save this broken world where we were separated from God. And on the night where the star came and People were drawing their attention to it and rumors began to kind of spread and people were like, the savior of the world is coming. That birth that was prophesied, that's going to be tonight. People are getting all excited. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Oh, who's the mother? Uh, Mary. Mary? Is, is Mary, uh, is she wealthy? Does she got some good connections? Is she super smart? No, no, she's just, she's just like a regular, a regular woman. Oh, okay. Well, she must be. Her, Joseph, she, uh, he must be some kind of king. He must be some kind of royalty. I mean, they're going to they're gonna give birth to the son of God. No, it's just a, just a carpenter. Just makes stuff out of wood. So you're telling me that the prophecies of the Bible. So you're telling me, Mr. Little Messenger Boy, 
You're telling me that the Savior, the one who's going to come and be born to rescue the entire world, you're telling me that he's going to be born from some random chick and a guy who builds closets? That's what, that's what you're telling me. Yeah. Yeah, bro. It's pretty unlikely. Do you really think that the Savior, I mean, the one who's coming to save the people from their sins, the one who's, who's going to come rule and reign, you think he's going to be born from some random lady and her carpenter husband? And people didn't believe. And people rejected what the Bible calls the Messiah, the anointed one, Jesus, who came in the flesh to save the world. People said, uh, that can't, I, I mean, I see the problem, the world's broken, and I know that God said he's going to bring a solution, but God would never bring his solution through some average Joe Schmo and some random lady named Mary. If God's going to do something, he's going to use some special people. He's going to use royalty. He's going to use... But God said, no, I'm going to use what you might consider the least experienced. Wait, so God, don't you think that you should, don't you think that you should have your, 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 your son, the king of all the world? Don't you think that maybe he should be born as like maybe the second child to someone who like already has kids and like knows how to raise them? Someone maybe a little bit more. I mean, what if they drop Jesus? Like what, like what if they break him? Like, God, what are you going to do then? You should probably get someone who's maybe a little bit more experienced at being a parent. But God said, I will use the least experienced so I can be the most exalted. Because when I use people that you never expect, because when God uses things that aren't that talented, that aren't that smart, then God gets all the glory. Because when you see people that you never imagined possible doing things that you never dreamed possible, the only, the only resolution is that God is in the midst, that there must be a God in heaven who's using people to change this world. Can I tell you that God used two ordinary people to raise the savior in the entire world. But God didn't look at their abilities. God didn't look at Mary's ability to be a mother. She didn't know how, she was never one. Joseph didn't know how to be a father. And we think sometimes that God, God is dependent on our abilities. I wanna say it again. Your opportunity is not dependent on your ability to be good, but on his ability to be God. And I'll tell you that when it came to Joseph and Mary in the birth of Jesus, what the world didn't count, just like that little boy, man, you don't matter. You're not royalty. You're not a king. How, how are you going to give birth? If you're not a king, how do you give birth to a king? Right? There's an air system in place. The world didn't count them. The world didn't deem the worthy. Yeah, you're never going to amount to anything, Joseph. You're just a carpenter. Marry you just a random woman. You're just a nobody. Can I tell you that God is so big, God is so mighty, that he used a nobody to raise somebody who would one day save everybody. That's the God that you and I serve. That God is not in the business of selecting the special. God is in the business of using the unlikely in unexpected ways to display his unexplainable power. That is the God. He's not looking for people that got their ultimates ready. He's not looking for people, oh, you feel like you've got it all kind of in a row. You've got your ultimate. You've got your super abilities. You've got your special. No, no, no. God is not in the business of selecting the special. He uses the unlikely. Not that God doesn't use talented people. Not that God doesn't use intelligent people. But what I need you to grasp today is that if you're here and you're not the most talented in your class, you're not the smartest guy at your job, you don't have the highest rank, it does not disqualify you for being used by God. If God can use a regular woman and a regular man to give birth to the Son of God who would save the people from their sins, God can use you to change the world. Can I tell you, if God can use an unlikely situation to give someone the opportunity to save the world, through Jesus, he can give you an unlikely situation to change the world. God will use you in ways you never thought possible. But here's why Jesus used that little boy. Remember, like I said, it's not our, about our abilities. How dare we think that our abilities are so big that God's impressed? How, how dare we reach a place where we think that anything that we can do is not bigger, is not worse or less than what God can already do without us. God loves us. He doesn't use us because he needs us. He uses us because he loves us. But why did Jesus use that little boy? Why did Jesus use that little boy? Because the little boy had the faith to believe that although I may have nothing, 
God can take nothing and turn it into something. God can take my five pieces of bread, my two fish. He could take my little lunchbox. He could take my little halo themed lunchbox and he can turn it into something that will change the world. He can take nothing and make something. But how do, how do you take nothing and make something? I'm pretty sure it's how he spoke the world into existence. When he started, God didn't need no special ingredients, okay? God didn't need no special ingredients. He didn't need the right amount of this and the right, the right amount of that. He didn't need two cups of flour, three cups of water, two eggs cracked half in the in between. He didn't need any of that. God didn't need no special ingredients. God took nothing and created something to which you and I live on. We walk on, we see around. Everything that we have, God took nothing. And made something. And you may feel in your life that you're nothing. You may feel in your life that you're no big deal. You're just a nobody. To all 121 people in the chat today. Can I tell you that God. He's not always in the business of selecting the special. But he uses the unlikely. And if you're here. And, and you think that it's unlikely that God will use you. You qualify. You qualify for God to be able to use you. But here's my question. Are you ready and are you willing to let God take your nothing and make something out of it? Because the little boy, he trusted in God and said, God, I don't, I don't have much. In my hands, it's not really that big a deal. But when I put it into your hands, I know you can use me to do something so great that thousands of years later, people are going to tell my story of my bravery, of my faith, of my availability Remember, it's not about ability. It's about availability to say, God, you can use me. And my question for you, Grim Jow 91, Forsaken, Higgs, Kate Liff, Katsumoto, Miss, Miss Cloud, Pluto, Ron the W. Are you willing? Are, are you available? Are, are you in a place in your life where you're saying, God, God, use me. God, use me. I want to be used by you. God, I'm not that impressive. God, I'm not that special. God, I don't, I, I don't have anything to offer you that you can't already do on your own. But God, although the world may not think I'm special, you do. Although the world, just like Angel, that little boy, uh, I see what you got to offer, little boy, but it's really not that impressive. It's not that special. And the reality is our gifts, what we have to offer God is not the greatest thing he's seen all day. But you are. Because he loves you. He cherishes you. And I want to encourage you today. I want to slay the spirit of thinking that God selects the special. Let's break the mindset. Let's break the mindset that God only uses the most talented. That God only uses the most wealthy. That God only uses the most resource. That God only uses those who are straight A students. God does not select the special. He uses the unlikely. Just like he used the Mary and Joseph. The regular old people. To give birth to the son of God. To give birth to the child who would save the people from their sins, who would forgive you and I. And some of you are sitting around and you're waiting for your ultimate, the church. You're saying, God, God, I know that you could use me, but God, in order for us to really make this play happen, I still need 20% of my ultimate. I still got 20 seconds of my cooldowns. God, I still need about another year of getting better in practice before I could actually be effective for you. God says, I don't, I don't need you to wait for your ultimate, the church. I don't need you to wait till the special ammo responds. Because remember, your opportunity is not dependent on your ability to be good, but his ability to be God. And can I tell you, you might feel like you're not yet good, but can I tell you, he's already God. While you feel like you're, you're waiting to be good, he's already God. In the meantime, he's already God. Keep on getting better. Keep on practicing. Keep on training. Keep on excelling. But in the meantime, in the meantime, he's already God. He's already reached 100% epicness, okay? He's not waiting for himself to get better. And he's saying that even though you're not 100% there, you don't have it all together. You got a broken past. You got some sins that I can cleanse away. You got some things that I can work with. As long as you are available, I can do something in your life. Stop waiting for your ultimate to finish charging. Stop waiting for the special ammo to spawn. Stop waiting for your cooldowns to come back up. God's ready to use you, but are you available? Will you be like that little boy who said, God, it's, it's, it's not much. It's not much. But when I give it to you, you can turn my nothing into something. And for every single one of you, I want you to be encouraged one last time. That God's not in the business. Today, we're going to slay the spirit and help you to understand. Break this mindset 
that God only selects the special. Mm -mm. He uses the unlikely and unexpected ways to display his unexplainable power. He uses the unlikely, but he also chooses the unlikely. Some of you are here and you've got a broken past. We got 127 people. We got 127 people, which is just out of this world amazing right now. And the reality is you think that the fact that God would love you is unlikely. You think, man, Pastor Susie, I like what you're saying. It sounds cool. It sounds inspirational. But man, you don't, know my, you don't know my past, dude. And you might be right. Amiwa, I, I might not know your story, but I knew that God loves you. I knew that. I do know that it's 100% likely that God sent his son Jesus to die for you because he cares for you. Breach, breach, breach. I, I might not know all your background. Classic sniper. Can I tell you, it's not unlikely that God will love you. Actually, the Bible says that God loves all people. And God desires that none would perish. There's not a single gamer out of 1.8 billion gamers. There's not a single person out of all the billions of people around the world. There's not a single person that it's unlikely that God loves them. But here's the reality. Will you take what you have and will you put it in the hands of Jesus? And the reality is what you have today is your life. It's not unlikely that God loves you. I promise you he does. No matter what you've done, your past does not disqualify you from God's love. But will you take your life today and say, you know what, God, I, I, I give it to you because I, I'm on my own. What I'm able to do with my own life is not that special. But when I put it into your hands, when, when I give it to you, God, you can save me. You can change me. You can do things in my life. And I don't know who you are watching from literally different places around the world. But I want to encourage you today that you are special to God, that he loves you. And that it's not unlikely that he desires you. And I want to tell you this, that it's not unlikely that you came into this dream. It's not unlikely that you're a guest with us today at God Squad Church. You want to know why it's not unlikely? Because I don't believe that you're here by accident. I believe that God brought you here. It was not unlikely. God brought you here because he wanted you to know how much he loves you and how much he cares for you. And I want to encourage you, if you're here today and you've never heard of God's love for you, you've never, you've never had an opportunity to, like the little boy, to just give what you have. Give your life to Jesus and watch him do amazing things with it. You'll never be the same. I'm not perfect. I'm not, I haven't arrived. But can I tell you that when I gave my life to Jesus, when it, just like the little boy gave it to God, I'm not, I've never been the same. And I'm never looking back, man. I'm never looking back, dude. Yo, put some Jesus hype in the chat if you're never looking back. But maybe you're here and today you want an opportunity to give your life to follow Jesus. If you've already... If you've already done that, if you've already given your life to follow Jesus, God's already invited you to his family. No need to put it in the chat today. But if you're here and you're making a first time decision that you're going to follow Jesus, I want you to put a hashtag Jesus in the chat. We want to pray for you. Will you be so bold? Will you be so bold like the little boy to come up and to give God what he, offered, what he offered? Will you be so bold to give God your life today to say, you know what? I'm not damned to hell anymore. I don't have a life that is far from God. I can be forgiven. I can be loved and I can be changed for the rest of my life. And if that's you, we want to pray for you. We want to celebrate with you. We want you to know how much of a life-changing experience this really is. But maybe you're here and you've been watching the stream and you're a regular part of our community. But maybe you can relate to how Andrew made that little boy feel that maybe you've fallen into the lie and the mindset that God only selects the special. And maybe, and maybe, maybe you're hearing like, well, God can't use me because I don't really have that anything great to offer. Or maybe you're here and you're like, I, I, I think God could use me, but, but, but not yet. My ultimate's still charging. I'm still waiting on that special ammo to respawn. My cooldowns haven't come back up yet. We, we can, we can accomplish our goal. We can, we can take down the world when my abilities are fully charged and they're, they're fully ready. Can I tell you that God wants to use you? God wants to use you now. There are definitely areas of your life that God's calling us to change and grow and improve. But stop waiting for your ultimate. Stop waiting for your ultimate to charge before you offer it to Jesus. Offer it to him right now at 37%. Offer God your special ammo even when there's still 17 seconds left up to the rut. Start accomplishing God's plans for your life, even when your cooldown still have 45 seconds till they come back up. God's not waiting. God's not waiting for your abilities. Because I want to say one last time that your chance, that God using you, 
Your opportunity is not dependent on your ability to be good, but on his ability to be God. And as long as he's God, he can use you. Doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter if you gave your life to follow Jesus yesterday in my stream. It doesn't matter. Save today, changing the world tomorrow. That's the way I look at it. Because the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead that lives in the, in the heart of a believer who's been following Jesus for 47 years lives in the heart of a believer who's been following Jesus for 47 seconds. That's the God we serve. He's big. Because again, if you think it's dependent on how long you've been following God, then you think it's about you again. It's not on your ability or it's not on how long you've been following Jesus. It's about the God we serve and he can use you. He can use you to change this world in ways you never thought possible. And if you're here, I want you to put a hashtag, I'm ready. If you're saying, God, you know what? I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting. My ultimate may not be ready, but I'm ready. If the ultimate, if my ultimate may not be ready, but I'm ready. Hashtag, I'm ready. God, I, you're going to use me. We're going to slay that spirit, selecting the special. God's not looking at the menu, selecting the special. Remember, he's the best thing on the menu, and he can use you. Let me tell you, I'm putting it in the chat. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm 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 already thinking ahead of when we got a real life church and I'm preaching on stage. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep my phone with me so I can still type in the chat. I'm gonna do it. You guys watch. You guys watch, man. You guys think it's unlikely? It's gonna happen. <laughs> you guys are amazing, and I want to encourage every single one of you. You're world changers. You're world changers. If God can take a random guy who didn't graduate college with the highest GPA, I'm not the smartest guy in the block. I'll be honest with you. I'm creative. But I'm not really the smartest guy in the block. Okay, my friend Scott, he's a scientist, okay? He's on another level. <laughs> I'm not the smartest guy in the block. I'm not the most special. But I'm glad that I said, God, you know what? I, I, I'm going to just throw myself your way. I may, I may not have all the ability, but I have the availability. And I said, God, use me. And I want to take a second to pray for you. That you would open up your heart and say, you know what, God? My ultimate's not ready, but I am. Let's go. I'm not waiting to make plays, okay? We're not, I'm not waiting to cap that second point to my ultimate's ready. I'm going in now. God, if you're sending me, if you're sending me, if God's the shot caller and he says, go in, our response is my ultimate's not ready, okay? If God's calling the shots, right? He's playing support. He's, he's sitting back in Lucio behind the second point. He says, now we got to get in, go in. Here's the window. Now's the time. And I go, God, but my ultimate's not ready. God says, I don't need your ultimate to make this play. God says, I can, do, I can do anything I want. I can do all things. I can do all things. And because he can do all things, you can do all things through Christ. And I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you that God would help you to realize your potential, that you're, you're ready. God can use you right now to change the world. Let me pray for you. God, we thank you so much for 116 world changers in the stream right now. God, I thank you so much for these amazing people that you've called. But God, every single one of us, we've got five fish and two loaves. We've got something that we can bring to you. So God, first, I pray that you would help us to identify what is it that we can bring to you. But God, I pray that we would not be filled with fear, believing that lie, that you only select the special. But may we believe today, God that you use the unlikely, that you do things that we never thought possible through people that we never thought qualified. And God, I pray for every single viewer, 16 Roxas, Amiwa, and Bob, Bob and Blue Angel, and CNG, and E2009, and FXXK, and Grimjow, and every single person here, God. These are world changers. Kindiana, Moral the Gad, Patty, Pluto, Snoop T, Sosin, God, these amazing people, Thermo, Zodakar, and maybe anyone who God who may be watching this stream and their names are on the list, they're watching on their phone, they don't even have a Twitch account. God, I may not be able to see their name, but you know their name. And you're saying, I can use you if you'll be available. So God, I pray that today we would identify our fish and our loaves and we would bring our fish and loaves to you realizing that it's really not about our gift. It's about our God. Our gift doesn't have to be impressive because our God is. But God, I pray that you would just breathe boldness, breathe confidence 
into the lives of every single person watching this stream to know that, God, you love them and that you can use them to change this world. And God, we thank you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.